Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. Bear with me for just a quick minute here. Pretty soon we're going to have some kind of cool video or slide while we're getting all the video going to watch instead of me looking back and forth at all the things. But hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Manette Riard, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. Yes, I am in my PJs. It's Friday. I'm feeling energized and so super excited because my mythical makeover experience featuring the secret garden starts today and I have so many ideas flowing in my head and I had to kind of slow down and remember what am I doing here on painting in your PJs. February is a very full month on my channel. We started two new series or playlist if you'd like. One is Monday mornings making mornings sacred with our sacred circle practice. We had the second one of those this past Monday, and I'm finding those so centering for myself and hoping others are going to enjoy that practice right along with me. Tuesdays and Thursdays are our self-love extravaganza with our self-love journaling prompts for this month. And this week, we've been making a pretty little heart-shaped book, which went upstairs to go into the brand new book press that my husband made me for my birthday. It is enormous and amazing. And I'm so excited. And then Fridays from February through the end of the 100 day project, I will be showcasing my progress on my own 100 day project, doing some sketch noting and visual journaling and gathering together live with everyone to celebrate our progress. For me, the 100 day project is all about progress, not perfection. It's all about attempting to do 100 days of something. And that might mean for me personally that some days I do two or three days worth in a day. But for me, the container of the 100 day project creates a lot of accountability that I get really excited about. And um, there's something about the energy of gathering together, connecting, with a variety of other people around the globe who are all working on the 100 day project that to me i can tap into that energy and good morning leslie good morning carol and uh, when i think about 100 day good morning becky when i think about the 100 day project what i start to think about is it needs to be fun it needs to be simple. It needs to be doable. And here I am having created a pretty ambitious project for myself, but I'm really excited about it. The 100 Day Project 2024 officially starts on February 18th of this year, but I personally am doing some pre-work, some planning, getting things set up in advance and practicing. And I was writing the description for today's video this morning and laughing at myself because there must be 20 Ps in the paragraph of, de of the description today. Good morning, new grandma. Good morning, Jackie. Excited to see everyone here this morning. So what I want to do over the, the this next week for myself as I start to get the project going is to practice and to continue to plan. And oh gosh, I was going to show you guys my giant map that I made. I'll have to show that next time. So I've, I've mapped out my outline for my whole book because my 100 day project is I am creating a book about the journey that I take people on. It's based on the content from my program, Your Creative Renaissance, which changed names this week. It feels like there's so much happening. I'm excited today is also new moon energy. This is a perfect day for planting seeds and uh making plans for what you want to do over the next month. New moons are great for helping us feel energized and excited. Can you tell I'm a little excited today? And so I got to start practicing sketch noting and visual thinking because what I decided is over the course of the 100 day project, I'm going to draw my book. This is not going to be a written book in the way I've already written and published three books and a dissertation. And I've always loved to write, but the more I've gone into the visual side of my own creative practice, the harder it's gotten to sit down and just write 
lots of words in the same way that I used to. And I knew two years ago that I would have to draw my way through this book, but I didn't know even how to get that started. But I feel like it took a while and I finally have the clarity. I have the map. I'm super excited. And today I get to practice and it's time to revisit my sketch noting and visual thinking skills. And one of the most fun ways to start that and something that I know will be incorporated throughout the book is stick figures. And oftentimes when we think we can't draw, stick figures are a great place to start. And people will even say, good morning, Judy. People will even say, I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, pfft, baloney on that. Anybody can draw a stick figure. And great artists don't know how to draw straight lines. Like all these myths and assumptions we make about creativity. But let's go ahead and get our camera switched over here. And so I went online just on Pinterest and I printed out some examples of stick figures in different shapes. And there are lots of sort of step-by-step -step tutorials on YouTube, here on YouTube and on Pinterest, but it's really pretty simple. And there's actually very different kinds of stick figures that are used in sketch noting, but I want mine to be active and a little cartoony. So I'm gonna practice some of these shapes. The thing that always trips me up personally when I'm drawing stick figures is the legs, right? And the legs and the arms are where we really get the action and the motion happening. So I'm gonna do some practice in my, what I'm calling my sketch note journal of these different stick figures. And then last night while I was watching TV, this morning in when we start the secret garden, we are working on inner child archetypes. And according to Jung, there are seven distinct inner child archetypes. So my goal for the hour this morning is to do a little bit of practice and then do some final versions of these inner child archetypes in a pretty worksheet that I can share with my community that's gathering. And we had over 180 people sign up for our mythical makeover. So I wanna just celebrate, say, say welcome. Um, if you're joining me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it and I'm so excited. Good morning, Marianne. And um, as always, just thank you for being here live with me. Thank you for catching the replay. Thank you for listening to my stream of consciousness rambles and conversations about coffee. I'm on my second cup this morning, made it a little stronger this morning. So I'm definitely feeling pretty perky, but I'm excited to draw this final version of these. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what is an inner child archetype along the way, but I wanna just start with some playful drawing of these stick figures. And so if you're feeling up to it this morning, and I'm gonna do this in pen, I'm not even gonna do it in pencil. I'm gonna make sure my pen works and I am going to write the date. I think today is February 9th. I thought yesterday was the Chinese New Year, but it's actually tomorrow. We're stepping also into the Chinese New Year, the year of the wood dragon. My birth sign is year of the dragon. So uh, if you pay attention, which I don't really, but I always get kind of curious to astrological forecast, it's gonna be a pretty magical year for most of us. A lot of energy, action, and things happening. And so I wanna ride that energy and get this darn book done and make it as fun and playful as I can. And the context of the book is really a heroine's journey for the rest of us, right? Where, I don't know about you, I'm not Harry Potter, I'm not Hermione Granger, I'm not uh, a hobbit, right? I'm not Frodo, I'm setting off on a big quest. I'm a 59 year old woman who loves my life and still sees my life as an adventure. And so I want to make sure that when I see it as an adventure, that there is a place that I'm going, a place that I'm traveling to. So a heroine's journey for the second act of life is kind of the theme for the book. I don't have the title yet, but by the done, time I'm done writing it, I'll have a title. But this morning I wanna start with drawing some stick figures. And I'm not gonna to worry too much about 
proportions and sizes, the more you draw these, the easier it gets. And so I love this little version of stick figures. They really don't have any um, neck, which is kind of funny. I kind of like characters with a neck, but this is an easy place to start. And so we start with a circle. We start with a rectangle and this rectangle and the tilt of the circle are going to become the two most important parts of bringing our stick figures to life and giving them uh, some movement and some action. And so this guy, person, character, is just standing straight, right? So two very simple legs and those legs could probably be just a little bit longer. This is my messy sketchbook page. This is meant to be practice and perfectly imperfect. And this character has one hand on its hip and one hand kind of scratching its head going, I don't really know what's going on. And from a, a visual thinking perspective, what me, this makes me think about is this person's head is full of questions, right? And so there's some thinking going on. I personally love creating characters with hair and faces, but before I got there, I spent hours drawing stick figures, but that's been a number of years ago. And so I know that going back and just focusing on pieces and parts of sketch noting and visual thinking is going to make my book writing drawing practice go a lot faster. And as I'm practicing drawing these sketch figures, I'm curious, I know a lot of you watched the video on planning for the 100 day project. I have um, a couple of questions. One, are you doing the 100 day project? And if so, what are you doing? And number two, well, that's two questions. And then the next question is, do you have questions about the 100 day project? Like, are you feeling stuck or confused? I got uh, tagged in, in someone's Facebook post yesterday about, you know, what to do, how should I do it, how to get started. If you haven't watched my video on planning for the 100 day project. Okay, this one, he looks like he's got his hands straight out in front of him, um, kind of like going, whoa, stop, hang on a minute. But I'd love to entertain questions. So Judy, uh, no questions, but you're going to be gardening, right? It's um, a perfect time for you to start gardening, if I remember correctly. So this one's uh, kind of funny. His arms are way too short. So if I want to give him maybe you know, a little more personality here. And this is how we just start to play with our characters to give them personality, size, dimension. So the head doesn't always have to be perfectly attached to the body. Diego, you are just like, come on up, come on. Are you coming up or not? He has been in and out of my lap all morning. What is up with you, dude? Oh, look at this big beastie boy. Let me change my camera real, just so everybody can say good morning to my big sweet snuggle puss. So he has been wanting to snuggle so much lately and he's so big it makes it really hard to draw. And now off he goes. Okay, I'm glad you're loving this. I love drawing these characters and doing this was how I came up with my cartoon representation of myself that I love to draw and incorporate into a lot of things. Okay, this time we're going to do a figure that looks a little bit more like he's running. And so we're going to have a little bit of a wonkier shape here with a little bit of a tilt. And this is where the hands and the legs really are so important and give that motion. So when we're running, we usually have one foot on the ground and we have one foot that's kind of kicked up behind us. And then our arms, we might have, our arms are usually at an angle when we're running and we've got them kind of out in front of us, really like we're reaching. So this, we start to see some of the motion and then we can even come in and just, you know, add 
some lines, like there's a little bit of energy and motion. And if I were gonna have this a face, right? So this would be perhaps um, a profile face, right? So he really looks like he's tilting forward. Tori, I love that. You're gonna do 100 turtles? You really love turtles. Um, then adding Zentangle zen patterns. Yeah, um, I, I love that. And, oh, I see, you're gonna do one watercolor of a turtle and then over the 100 days add patterns to it. Oh my gosh, that is a genius idea. Dog and cat sketches, right, Carol? When you really sit down and think about it, it has to simplify, right? Um, like the idea of starting with stick figures, want to do more silly and whimsical in ink and splashy watercolor. I love that, Carol. I love the doing the watercolor blobs and then making them into animals. That's a super, super fun uh, project to do. And there are stick figure animals as well. Maybe one day we'll do some pages of stick figure animals because you know I love drawing animals. My uh, personal gallery of art here in the studio is becoming more and more of a menagerie these days. And this is kind of a fun, quirky one. Like it looks like a person is kind of, you know, sitting or standing, talking to someone as a person who is a bit of a hand talker. This kind of reminds me of me. So we've got a little bit of that hip jutting out here, right? And standing at just a little bit of an angle. Again, we've kind of got that hand here. And when you think about your arm, you know, you can think about really the the length of your arm from your shoulder to your elbow and your elbow to your hand is about the same but where we can create more caricatures in the work that we're doing is to change up proportions and make them a little more fun and silly right so this one almost looks like he's expostulating about something and then maybe this leg is a little bit bent right and this one is kind of a little bit straight and so we start to create a ton of personality just by changing up the lines and then these can be we can add color to them they can stay black and white we can take and add just a little bit of shadow to them to give them even a little bit more character and personality so traditionally sketch noting and visual recording especially graphic recording at conferences is often done just with black and a little bit of color to highlight, right? So on this one, that shadow might be here and here. So we can just add a little bit, even more personality so simply with just a little, little bit of shading. And I have to say that my Zentangle practice has given me so much confidence in my line drawing. So the decade, more than a decade, almost 15 years of my Zentangle practice and just being in that habit of drawing repetitive lines and patterns has made a huge difference to my art practice overall because it reminded me that I can draw stick figures. And again, notice how sketchy I'm making them. I'm not trying to make them perfect by any means. Pinterest is one of my favorite resources for building my sketchnote library because there are so many great collections um, of how to draw arrows, how to draw borders. And so maybe this person is arms up celebrating. So we've got those legs a little bit wider, almost like they're jumping up celebrating. And now I see the difference, right? Where how much better these are with just that one little bit of line of shading, right? It is so much fun. Um, this one is a great one for sketch noting, probably one that I will use in my book. So here is someone pointing. So when I was looking for 
kind of those images to practice. I was looking for things that I might be wanting to draw myself. And eventually I created my own character, but this was where I started. And actually I even started, started before this with the really simple. I literally started with this kind of a stick figure. And then from this kind of a stick figure, you know, maybe I went to, if we go back to that, you know, running person So we start simple, 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 and look at the, the angle of that is totally wrong. Legs are hard <coughs> for me. I always get the angles wrong, but this is where I started. And then I went to this, and then I went to creating my own character out of all of it. Um, but I love the, the one that's pointing, right? So maybe there's some little birdies flying. So you can see how we can go from something this simple to starting to capture ideas, questions, feelings, right? There's a lot of ways that we can use this. And this is so good for our own personal sketching practice. If you're wanting to do a daily creative journaling where you're sort of thinking about what happened and you wanna be able to illustrate your day, stick figures are a great way to do this. All right, I'm gonna keep going and do a few more here. I have literally pages full of them and uh, would love to sit here and draw them all, but I need to get my worksheet done today as well. All right, are you guys drawing along? Are you watching and listening? What are you thinking? Is this gonna be fun to watch me over the next 100 days? And by the way, I did not turn the ads on this morning. Um, so if you see ads, make sure you tell me because I'm pretty sure that I did not turn it on this morning. So we're gonna do someone running again, but we want it to kind of look like here, like they're sort of chasing after someone. And Tori, how's the baby? How are mom and dad doing? Those first couple of weeks are so magical and so challenging. I saw one of my girlfriends this week that has a uh, seven month old. Okay, so this foot, right, really needs to be way down here at this level. And she was so tired. It had been a rough week drawing along, watching and listening. Awesome. Glad you love the ideas. So now this one almost looks like they're kneeling and getting ready to propose, right? Looks more like they're kneeling. You moved to Florida, congratulations, Cindy. Great to see you back with us here this morning. And moving is hectic. Like there's so much emotions that come up when we're moving, even when we move by choice. All right, so here's a cutie pie for Valentine's Day that would make an adorable Valentine's card. And I'm gonna start with the heart and then we're gonna draw two people holding on to the heart together. And we're gonna use the principle of Zentangle here where we're drawing behind. Awesome, Tori, so glad to hear that. Glad everyone's doing well. Glad your hubby is home too. And then let's give her maybe a little bit of a dress. And then she's got one hand kind of here at the top and then, you know, one hand here holding the heart. And then we have our other person over here. And the more messy that I'm willing to be, the better these turn out and I'm not and there should not be a hand there. That hand is actually behind. Um, 
the more willing I am to be messy and sketchy and playful, the better these get. Right, and maybe we've got some love happening here. So a really simple themed kind of sketches as well. And again, you know, we can come in on any of these and just add that little bit of character. So this one feels like that shading would be over here. And this dude, it would be maybe down here. Give our little bit of shading to our characters. And this just gives that sense even more that they're kind of looking towards the center, towards each other. So fun, fun, fun. Okay, so I love drawing these, right? We just spent a, about a half hour and I just kind of filled a, well, I talked a bunch at the beginning. So maybe that was uh, 20 minutes, right? To fill a page. So you get the sense of the amount of effort and practice that it takes to work our way through this. Of course, if I wasn't talking my way through it, I would probably be able to go a little bit faster. So what would I do with some of these characters? So I had an idea this morning. I was flipping through some old sketch noting stuff that I have. And one of the things is, you know, everyone does these really fun uh, introduction posts on Instagram. And I thought, well, how much fun would it be if for my book or for Instagram or whatever that I drew an introduction of myself so and told people a little bit about myself. So I want to have some fun I'm going to just draw a square and this is going to be the draft version of this and I'm making it a square because if I want to use it on Instagram it's easier if it's a square and maybe I'm going to zhuzh up that square a little bit. Remember this is a practice drawing and sometimes if I'm creating kind of a, a template or practice drawing like this I might start in pencil, right? I might start in pencil. In fact, I'm going to switch to pencil. And well, no, I'm going to stick with pen because it'll be easier to see. I don't know why my light looks a little bit dark this morning. Oh, that's better. It was just a little bit on the yellow side. And at the top, I'm going to draw a banner. So another classic creative journaling, bullet journaling, sketch noting, visual thinking is learning how to draw all kinds of fun banners, arrows, right? Just simple iconic symbols. So I'm just going to do a quick little banner here. learning like it took me forever to just learn how to draw those little to make it actually look like it was a, a wavy banner lots of practice and so i'm going to start with who am i and when i'm doing lettering i will often do this in pencil because i never get the spacing right like i can tell already that i'm going to have to smoosh my last name in there because my name is long to get my whole name in there but it's still readable right so and maybe my PhD will go on the edge of the ribbon over here because that's important to me and then in the center I want to do a cartoon sketch of me and I love kind of the celebration idea. So I'm going to make her pretty big. Again, just being willing to have it be sketchy and simple and playful. And I'm going to put my curly hair in there. 
Although winter in Colorado is so dry, my hair is not so curly. And then I always draw myself with my glasses. And I'm looking at this already going, I think maybe I made it a little too big and I actually like more, um, I like my characters to have a neck. So again, sketchy practice, right? This is just my draft. Hi, good morning, Yvonne. You're doing positive quotes on cards. Genius, I love that. Genius, genius. All right, and up here, I'm thinking this is an introduction. I want to tell people some things about myself, right? So identify as an artist, as an author, and as a creative guide for others. And then I'm going to come in here and do some listing out of things that I love that I feel like are an introduction and I'm going to want them to have some icons and it may take me a minute to figure out what those icons are going to be but this is right from this the stick figure practice to something like this is not a big leap and a big step. I think it's really fun to create a cartoon representation of ourselves. So I'm a cat lover. Um, family is hugely important to me, right? So wife, mama, daughter, sister. Some of the roles I play, right? Um, I love being an entrepreneur and I would actually say I am a multi-passionate serial entrepreneur. I love my big snuggly cat sometimes too. It's been cold at night and both cats have really been wanting to be in my lap. And we got these two new chairs where we used to have a big couch. And so they used to be able to both lie between Brad and I on the couch. Now, and because my lap is always full of an art project, right? So last night I was working, I was sketching while we were watching TV and they both kept trying so hard to get into my lap and being so annoying. Um, they were not happy that I was not making my lap available. So Diego has been trying a lot this morning. Now he's over in my desk chair, snuggled up on a blanket. Um, let's see, I love dragons. I was born in the year of the dragon, right? So I'm gonna figure out how to maybe draw a more iconic dragon. I am a lover of dragons. And that started when I first got introduced to fantasy fiction, right, in my teenage years. Um, I am a voracious reader. And don't ask me how many books I have on the go right now. So I would have voracious reader. And I have books in print, I have books in Kindle, and I have books in Audible and iBooks. I have books in all the places. Um, so I am a voracious reader. And uh, here what feels like maybe wants to go here is my values. When I think about connecting with others and introducing myself and letting them know about me, right? Helping them 
know what I value helps me find those people who have shared values, right? I would also say I have a big heart and I love sharing that heart, right? I have more ideas than I know what to do with, do with most of the time. That's where that serial entrepreneur comes in where And we definitely got to get that artist in here with, you know, maybe a paintbrush, right? So when I think about the things that, what do I want people to know about me to help them get closer to me or understand me a little better? So I value connection. I value freedom, creativity, spirituality. and fun, right? The more that I lean into how can I make my life fun? And as soon as I said, how can I draw my book instead of write it, then I'm living in alignment with my own core value of fun. So there's a fun little draft of a sketch note style introduction that might go uh, right into my book rather than writing out my bio. And I could do the same thing. So yesterday we were talking about visual timelines. Well, if I wanted to introduce people to my professional self, I might do kind of more of a visual timeline of achievements, right? So there's the, you know, academic part of Manette, right, to consider. There is the career part, um, you know, the work, right? There is achievements and awards. There's my books that I've written, right? So there's all these different ways that we can approach visually telling people about ourselves. And it's just a very fun and different way to look at our life, right? Okay, so I need to do my homework and my prep for my secret garden class today. And I'm going to do that on this bigger sheet of paper here. And one of the things that we're talking about, if you're familiar with the novel, The, the Secret Garden, um, it is all about children, wonderful children, about Mary and Colin and Dickon. And it's a great story to help us think about all the different aspects of our inner child. So according to Carl Jung, archetypes are unconscious patterns that live within us and are also in the world all of around us. So mother is a universal archetype that we all recognize. Even if we don't have children of our own, we have the aspect of mother within us, whether we're male or female, right? It's the caring, nurturing, archetypal part of us. Well, according to Jung, we also have different inner child aspects, and it's important to see them, acknowledge them, love on them, and make sure that your inner children aren't driving the bus of your life, right? So doing inner child work is very important. It's um, popular in the creative world, and it's a big part of uh, psychology as well, and especially people that do Jungian style uh, psychology. And according to Jung, there are seven different inner child archetypes. So I had fun last night working on some ideas for how could I draw these inner child. So here's how I go from that stick figure idea to starting to create my own cartoons, right? So I'm still using that same rectangle-ish shape but I've made it a little bit girly. And I'm using a pencil here because I will want to clean this up and be able to make a copy of it and share it with people. So one of the inner child archetypes is the divine child. So when I thought about the divine child, 
I instantly thought of an angel or being connected to spirit. And if you're participating in the secret garden, there's a couple of you. I'm not giving anything away. There's a lot more to, to come. You're just seeing me draw the characters and you get a sneak peek of the name of the characters of the of the inner child archetypes. And we will go into a lot more detail and depth about the, these characters on the call today. So you guys are getting a little sneak peek at the prep and planning for that. And when I think of that inner divine child, to me, she feels very restful. So there is our simple little divine child. And I actually liked the first sketchy drawing that I did. Give her just maybe a little more movement and a little bit more, make those wings just a little bit bigger. So there is our divine child. So when we think about the eternal child, you can kind of guess, right, what that eternal child is like. If you heard the term eternal child, you know, what would that make you think of? So this one has some pigtails or little buns up there. And she's definitely in motion and pretty happy. This was one where I had to work on the feet to kind of capture the angle and the direction. And when I get this down with pencil, then when I go back with the pen over the top, I can fine tune the drawing. So drawing starting with pencil is kind of a great idea to just be able to get the structure of things down, right? And then the eternal child, right? The sun is always shining. Maybe everything is rainbows and unicorns. And then we have our nature child. That's right, Jackie, remind me where you are. You'll be a sleeping child and the replay will be waiting for you when you wake up. Are you in Australia, Jackie? There's a few of you in Australia. So this one is the nature child. Again, you can kind of in Perth. Awesome. In Perth. Yeah, I have, um, have people all over the world signed up for this and also in my creative renaissance program that I'll be sharing more about over the, the weekend. And um, so I have to do live calls at a variety of different times a day to make sure that I get to connect with people live. So I wanted to think about connection to nature here. So I have a, a picture of me, an adult picture of me that I love where I'm holding a bouquet of flowers picked from my garden in my backyard when we lived in Goleta. And I think about the character Dickon in the secret garden and there's a Robin in the secret garden who befriends Mary and actually helps her to discover the secret garden. So maybe we've got a little birdie sitting here on her arm. Again, keeping these very simple, very, very playful. And of course, she's standing outside in the grass. 1045. Oh, you're more of a night owl than I am. I could not be uh, awake, much less making art at this time of day. This one's still 
somehow not quite right over here. This is why I start with pencil. There we go. So we have divine child, eternal child, the nature child, and then we have the magical child. And this one was really fun to draw, but it definitely took me a while to get the position of the body right so that you can see here, I started with just a classic line drawing of a stick figure in order to get the shape of the body right. So we can really practice and play. Same thing here, I wanted to draw a child that was reaching um, for the hearts, right? And so again, to get the shapes of the legs, I went back to the, the structure of the body first. And it's a great way to practice getting the movement of the body going. So over here we have our magical child. So again, with this one, I started, right, with that sort of little bit of a bent spine. Because I really wanted to capture the movement and the character is kind of leaning towards the hat. And I actually, uh, when I did this one, I drew the hat first to just help with placement of the character, just like I did in the sample where I drew the heart first, right? I drew the hat first. And then I came back over the top of this and added some really simple clothes to our character. And so now when I erase those lines, even though we don't see that inner shape, it feels like everything's sort of moving in the right direction, right? It, we can still see how that character is kind of tilted there. And then our arms, we have one arm here holding the hat, and we have this other arm stretched out behind that is holding the magic wand. And this made me think so much of those, you know, childhood kids who always loved magic and magic tricks and pulling rabbits and doves and things out of a hat. And we've got magic flowing all around this child all the way back down to coming right out of our hat. And that face is looking a little bit upwards. So notice how I slanted the eyes here to have that face looking a little bit upwards. And I can have that mouth also, you know, so then maybe the part of the hair is over here. And I gave this little character a little bow tie and maybe some little cute buttons on the shirt, right? So we just start to add some of those really simple, playful elements. And so these are the more positive inner child aspects, but within us, a lot of us have the orphaned inner child. Even if you weren't actually an orphan, you may have felt abandoned, distant, left out, like you didn't belong. Those are all feelings um, that arise from that aspect of orphan child within. And this one, again, I started because I wanted to get the tilt right 
of making it look like this character is leaning up against a wall all by itself. And I wanted to get those legs and feet just right that I started just with the lines. And this one, that head is tilted way down. And we'll use some little character lines to put a look of sort of worry and sadness on that face. And then I'm going to come back and add the clothes sort of pooled around the character. And then we're going to have the, the hands here sitting on the knees. It was hard to draw the sad ones, I have to admit. And yet there were definitely in my own inner child work times when I felt orphaned, abandoned, distant and disconnected from my family. Give our character, just bring it to life just a little bit. These are such simple sketches, but they communicate so much. And then we all also have a wounded inner child. So this one, I really wanted to capture that child looking down and kind of like the shoulders are hunched, so we're not gonna see the chin. It's like the chin is kind of um, hanging over that edge of the dress there and maybe a little bit sort of tilted to the side. And we've got maybe a broken heart here. And there's a cloud of sorrow sort of hanging over and this little girl felt like she had piggy tails and again we all have aspects of all of these characters within and then I want it to look like this character is looking down so that face Notice how much forehead there is, and I could even bring the hair down. So, and we want this to be way down here. And then maybe there's some tears and some raindrops. And again, we're all, all of these characters, right? We are the eternal child, we're the wounded child, the orphan child. At different times in our lives, we've experienced many of these feelings. And then the last one is that dependent or needy child. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm having fun. And um, this may not be the final version either, but uh, it's great to, to, to draw them. So this one was that when I thought about the dependent child, you know, one that's always looking to others for support. Um, and that can really impact us as adults if we still have an active, needy child within. And so I wanted this child to really kind of be looking up and not, you know, a very happy look on their face. So there's still that kind of worried searching. So the thought that came to me was this child is reaching. So I went and looked up. How do I draw a stick figure that's reaching? And again, it was about getting the angle of the legs just right. One foot is back, one foot is forward, and then those arms are really reaching up high. And we'll give this one 
This one I gave a little bit um, t-shirt, maybe a little short girly skirt there, and then those arms are reaching. And this is that person and that child that's always searching for love outside of themselves, right? They're not able to meet their own needs. And we've all been that child as well, right? This one might need a little ear in there since we've got that little bit of a profile. And what I want you to, to see from this is one, how we went from stick figures to sort of actually creating characters. And also when you're thinking about the 100 day project, I just spent an hour and got three pages of sketching done. Nothing is finished, everything is in progress. So I'm sort of mindful of the amount of time that things take. So when I come when it comes to doing our planning, you need to decide. You may not have an hour every day. Maybe you have 15 minutes a day. I could do a hundred stick figures and that could be my hundred day project, which would go a long way to practicing. Or this is a fairly small journal, right? It's not, they're not giant, giant pages. So I might do a hundred pages of stick figures and all I need to do is one page and imagine how much practice, what a better artist I would be, how better I would be at capturing. So my goal for the hundred day project is going to be to do um, a page a day like this. And it can be a draft. It doesn't have to be a completed page, but every page needs to be one of the illustrations from my book. Doesn't mean there's not going to be any words, but I want there to be a lot of pages like this. And so this journal, I think I shared this before, I just have practiced, right? Drawing these characters over and over again, doing some writing and some journaling practicing eyes, right? Practicing angles of faces. You know, this one is wonky. It's not quite there yet. So I needed to work on proportions, right? Some days it might just be this simple. <coughs> so again, just sharing with you today a little, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me sharing a little glimpse into my practice and process and the direction that I'm going for my personal 100 day project and hopefully inspiring you along the way to try some sketch noting and visual thinking of your own. So I'm super excited about the journey ahead. And I'm super excited about my weekend with the Mythical Makeover experience and getting to spend some extra creative time with one of my favorite books, The Secret Garden, as well as uh, a group of absolutely amazing and creative women. I can't wait to see familiar faces and make new friends along the journey. And I will be back here bright and early Monday morning with our Make Mornings Sacred Practice. Have a beautiful weekend, everybody. I hope you spend a lot of time making art. Uh, if you're in the States and you're a football lover and you're going to be watching the Super Bowl, so I will draw my way through the Super Bowl while Brad watches it. I'll pause and um, uh, watch the commercials, right, in the, in the halftime show and um, enjoy the experience of sitting with him while he watches the football. So whatever you're doing this weekend, may you enjoy it. I'll see you all next week. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.